The special education came about as a response to the lessons we learned around institutionalization. Inclusion and integration, we find, is a very good thing because we're trying to create a generation of children without disabilities who don't have biases or fear around disability. And the only way to do that is by placing very young children together in classrooms. By federal law, children with disabilities' rights, the constitutional right to an education was not recognized until 1975. And Washington plays a unique role um, in that we were the first state before the federal law came about to mandate that children with disabilities could attend public school. Before that, it was optional. It was whether or not a school district decided they wanted to serve kids with disabilities and whether or not they could raise enough money to do that. So families often paid for their child's education, extra therapies, and paid rent and spaces for other buildings um, until 1975. And then the federal law recognized that children with disabilities had the same right as everybody else to attend public school and to have their unique needs met. So there's a difference between showing up at school every day and getting the kind of instruction that you need to be able to equally access your peers and the curriculum and the kinds of activities that every other child accesses in a public school. So there are two main federal laws that influence what we think of as special education. The first law is a civil rights based law that says to all public school districts, children with disabilities have a right to attend and have access to the same activities that every other child has. And that's called Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. And it has the same requirement as the IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, for a free and appropriate public education for all students in the least restrictive environment. The IDEA is a funding statute that gives money to school districts if they follow all the rules around ensuring children with disabilities get access to a public education. The IDEA has a lot more rules in it than Section 504. Section 504 was written early on in the 70s when several lawsuits were culminating, and it was really around this notion that students had a civil right to access public education, and the regulations are not as explicit, and they capture a larger group of students. And so you may be eligible under Section 504, but not eligible under the IDEA because it has a smaller catchment and definition of disability than Section 504. The special education laws, the Washington Administrative Code that we use, um, can be real overwhelming or it can be a, a great tool once you learn how to use it. Uh, Washington PAVE does do a one-day um, class that parents can take and it's free and they go through all of the wax and special education. We teach families how to put all their information together, how to understand what laws that they're going to be dealing with in asking for a specific service such as uh, occupational therapy or physical therapy, um, looking at programs whether they fit your child. Um, we want parents to understand that they are the truly the expert on their child. They are the true expert. There's nobody that knows their child better than they do. And their information is so valuable in putting that program together and meeting the needs of that child. And they need to understand how valuable they are in that process. So it's important to remember, you're not supposed to have gone to law school or be a professional in order to engage in this discussion around your child's needs, what a program might look like, and whether or not it's working.